Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 135 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of LAD CTO with challenging visualization. The patient had morbid obesity and presented with unstable angina. He had a stress echo that uh, showed ischemia in the LED distribution and was turned down for bypass because of the obesity. He was afterwards referred for PCI of both an LAD CTO as well as a lesion in the left main. He did have um, a proximal LAD CTO. The proximal cap was ambiguous. The length was about 30 millimeters. There was a good quality distal vessel that was filling by contralateral non-interventional collaterals and there was a diagonal at the distal cap. Our plan here was to not treat the left main first because subsequent equipment advancement might lead to stent deformation. Instead, see if we can treat the LAD first and then stent um, the left main at the end of the procedure. Our plan here was to uh, try to use IVUS and different projections to understand the proximal cap ambiguity. The person also underwent coronary CT and geography that was used for CT co-registration. And this is the, these are the five ways to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity, including various views, which we will see were very useful in this case, specifically the LAO codal. CT angiogram, we use the co-registration and the center lines, use of IVUS, dissection techniques, as well as the retrograde approach, which was not an option in our case. Bilateral femoral axis was used, and this is the CT co-registration with the center lines highlighting the anticipated course of the vessel. We did try um, wiring under the guidance of the co-registration, but we had challenging entering the vessel. Uh, given uh, the ostia location of the LAD CTO, we did place safety wires in both the ramus as well as the circumflex. And then, despite uh, using uh, various guide wires, we were unsuccessful in entering the CTO. What made the difference was using the LAO caudal view, the spider view. Here we can see the ramus taking off, we can see the circumflex taking off, and we can see a slight filling into the proximal cap, which was very useful for directing our guide wire using a Supercross 120 angulated microcatheter. Because of the patient's obesity, doing these views required use of CINE and geography, which um, uh, can raise the radiation dose quite highly. After that, we were able to advance a field of XT, which seemed to knuckle in the course of the vessel, followed by a Mongo Gladius wire. And then we were in the middle AD, we decided to re-enter using the stick and swap technique. Unfortunately, we had poor visualization. After we were subintimal in the middle AD, we had poor visualization from the right coronary collaterals. Therefore, the re-entry was essentially blind. We did the so-called double blind stick and swap, sticking from both sides. So this is the exit port proximal to the proximal marker. But we also uh, advanced the Gaia third wire in the exit port between the two markers. So st did the stick both inferiorly between the two markers as well as superiorly, which is um, entered by using the exit port proximal to the proximal marker. So double blind. Uh, stick and swap technique and then we used a polymer jacketed mongo guide wire this exits from the exit port proximal to the proximal marker and seem to advance smoothly along the course of the vessel we did ivus that confirmed that we were actually within the distal true lumen and then placed um, uh, stands all the way from the ostium of the lad into the middle lady which um, did restore flow without compromising flow in the ramus branch or for the circumflex for that matter. Of note, we had to intermittently disengage the guide catheter to avoid deep engagement and ischemia given the significant left main lesion. Finally, we stended the left main and uh, achieved a nice final result with uh, TM3 flow in the LAD. There was some diffuse disease in the middle LAD 
which we elected not to stand because the CTO vessel often grows after the vessel is recanalized. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that visualization can be challenging in morbidly obese patients requiring high radiation doses. Second, to clarify proximal cap ambiguity, some of the simple techniques, such as using different in geographic views, the spider view in our case was critical, understanding better the origin of the LAD. Also important to protect the side branches when there is an osteal lesion at the takeoff of other major side branches. We did use an angulated microcatheter, the Supercross 120, to advance the guide wire into the LAD. And finally, we used essentially a triple blind stick and swap technique because the LED was poorly visualized at that point of the procedure. We did use the Stingray balloon and perform blind sticks on both exit ports, followed by use of a polymer jacketed uh, Mongo guide wire to gain access into the distal trilumen. Thank you.